Hi everyone, this is Johan from Real Biomes. A lot of people have been recently asking us how to get movie render cube working for large worlds, as every time they try to, for example, render out our 64 square kilometer desert map, they would get a crash. To give a bit of background for the people who don't know, movie render queue has for a long time been quite problematic when it comes to rendering large open worlds, especially ones that heavily rely on landscape grass. Now, the fundamental issue with movie render queue and landscape grass has to do with how landscape grass is generated pre-render by movie render queue. In a nutshell, landscape grass is scattered by the GPU on demand, generally based on the location of the camera. This means that under normal circumstances, only a portion of your landscape has landscape grass generated and visible. By default, what Movie Render Queue tries to do is load in all of these objects before the render starts to avoid any sort of assets loading in during the render. As under normal circumstances, landscape grass would take a little bit of time to spawn all the assets on your landscape. As under normal circumstances, landscape grass would take a bit of time to generate properly on your landscape. Let's start by having a quick look at our movie render queue config. So let's go to window, cinematics, movie render queue. We're gonna hit render up here and here we can add one of our sequences. I'm just gonna add this one. Now, we don't have a config that's been saved yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just click here on the unsaved config. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a setting called game overrides. Here, there is a setting of interest for us, and that one is called Flush Grass Streaming. Now, what in practice this setting does is it tries to load in all of the landscape grass before the render has even started to avoid any risk of the assets popping in during the render, which is a real problem with landscape grass, which is the reason why this setting exists. However, the issue is that it's trying to load in everything, and this is irrespective of view distance of asset call distance in general for some reason it completely ignores for example this setting here override view distance scale which i assume is related um but it doesn't really take that into account instead it looks at the landscape it looks at all the components that have the potential to have landscape grass spawned on them in this case it's all driven by the landscape material and what happens is you have a 64 square kilometer landscape uh, with potential to spawn a billion instances of assets and it tries to do this and it crashes it fails obviously it fails it's never going to be able to do this this is not how landscape grass was designed but this is how they're trying to force this issue which might work on a smaller landscape but for a large landscape like our desert cliffs example map it's just going to cause issues it's going to crash now let's talk about the solution so the first thing we would need to do is disable flush grass streaming now in practice disabling this means that when the shot starts because of the on-demand nature of landscape grass you're going to likely see that your scene is missing a lot of details there's a lot of ground objects that are going to be missing a lot of small rock um, it's generally just going to be the landscape and this is simply because uh, landscape grass needs a bit of time to be able to properly spawn within view now this brings us to our next step let's go ahead and add an anti-aliasing setting here there are a few things that we want to touch the first thing we want to do is we want to tick render warm-up frames otherwise our render preview will be completely black and we won't be able to visually gauge what is happening until the render actually starts which we don't want we actually want to see the landscape grass physically spawning in through our scene so that we can judge our next step better and the next step is we need to add a certain amount of engine warm-up frames and what this basically does is it tells the engine hey render x amount of frames before you actually start playing back the scene right and this is going to play in our hands because all this these frames that the engine is rendering is going to also spend time generating landscape grass gradually within the camera location now you technically don't need to have this ticked again it might make it a bit slower actually the initial warm-up and this is one of the main downsides of this 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 technique it's going to require you to wait a little bit longer for each render to actually complete because not only do you need to wait for the render uh, you need to also wait for the render warm-up to stop and make sure that there's enough you know landscape grass spawned into your scene for it to be worth rendering 
Now I'm just going to add 1500. This is a pretty standard amount of warm up frames, um, maybe 1000. Uh, it depends a little bit on the speed of your machine, you know, how powerful you can compute uh, these and how fast you can generate the landscape grass. But, you know, 1000, 1500, something like that, it's a very reasonable number. Now, this definitely isn't a perfect solution um, as there is still a, an increased chance of having landscape grass pop in during the render because, again, you have to kind of eyeball it based on the preview and I will show you in a quick second uh, how this looks like in practice. I'm just going to do some test renders, uh, but it's better than at least, you know, not being able to render anything at all, right? So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick test render to showcase uh, exactly what I'm talking about in practice. All right, so as you can see, the render is currently warming up. It's uh, generating all of these frames and what you see in the render preview is actually happening in real time. You might be able to notice a little bit of wind, although it's very faint. Um, but you can also, to be more specific, notice there are some areas in the background, especially that are looking a little bit thin. And this is because the landscape grass is not generated yet. So that's what we're waiting for. So we are at, I don't know, frame 700 right now. And oh, you can see some assets start popping into our viewport here. Um, yeah. There we go. So this is basically the idea with doing it this way is you're only letting the engine generate landscape grass types that are needed for the scene instead of generating absolutely all of them, which is ridiculously overkill. Now, one additional tip that I have for you is render the scene without actually having the map loaded. And doing this, you can save a ton on system memory. For a concrete example, if I load our 64 square kilometer desert map, what's going to happen during the render is I'm sitting at 40, 50 gigabytes of, of memory being used, while if I just render um, through movie render queue without actually loading the map beforehand, I'm sitting only around 25, 30 gigabytes of system memory being used. So very useful to actually have this set up. And the only thing you really need to do uh, to, to keep in mind before doing this, I'm just going to add a random render here. Um, as you can see, the map is not assigned. If you do not have a map loaded, uh, it's not going to assign the correct uh, map here in the slot. So we will need to look for the, the correct map in this case. I'm just going to select our 64 square kilometer sunny. And that's it. Now you can render and you can enjoy much lower uh, memory consumption by the engine. Another important factor to take into account when rendering these large open worlds is the sheer amount of objects that you will be rendering, especially if you're doing a large vista render or, or, or something that really showcases a lot, like a, a large part of the environment. Um, and if, if you do that, what can end up happening sometimes is you run into buffer overflows uh, with either nanites or a virtual shadow map, which can lead to things like objects being straight up missing from your scene your shadows can be flickering all over the place same with the objects and assets in general like this can be flickering um now luckily this is quite easy to identify and it's usually visible in uh, the console uh, as a yellow warning text uh, if you see this if you notice anything else being wrong with your scene there's a few things that you can do and that is to um, use a set of command variables increase the default limits of, of nanite and virtual shadow map and this way you're going to solve a lot of these um, overflow issues that you are undoubtedly going to run into if you are trying to render uh, very complex scenes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to our config folder, which is in your project, and I'm going to open up the default engine i9. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. In this case, we already have everything set up, except that it's been commented out, and there's a reason for that. Um, and that is because this does have a general negative impact on performance. So I would generally avoid this uh, being enabled for any real-time purposes, but for rendering, it should be enabled. Now, I have put all of these CVARs in the description below, so you can just copy-paste them into your own default engine. Um, but if you have uh, already uh, one of our products, um, you can open the default engine, uh, which is basically the exact one that you're seeing here that we're shipping. And all you have to do is remove the, uh, the symbol. I don't fucking remember what it's called. <laughs> um, but basically it's commented out by default, so it's not enabled. Now doing this is going to drastically increase your chances of having a successful render without running into any of these uh, so-called buffer overflow issues. 
Uh, and the last thing uh, actually that I wanted to mention is this is actually related to virtual shadow maps. And again, similar thing, we need a custom CVR here to increase the limit of what virtual shadow maps can render in one go. I've added it in the description and you can add it here into the default engine or you can just add it into the console if you want. Um, these uh, nanite C bars, they are read only and need to be added into the default engine and the engine has to be restarted. You can't do this with the engine open, so just keep that in mind. Anyways, that's it for this short tutorial. Uh, I hope you at least found it useful and I know this isn't the most visually impressive tutorial. I'm just sitting here talking for the most part, but I feel like there's a lot of, um, you know, interesting information to communicate across. So hopefully, yeah, again, you found it useful that you learned something. And if you have any specific requests, anything um, that you want to know, anything you want to see from us, uh, then yeah, feel free to leave a comment below and uh, see you next time.